Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the great joy that this morning has been. I thank you that you've allowed everyone to travel here safely and that we are really enjoying sweet fellowship and sharpening and training with one another. God, I pray that you'd be with us, help us to be attentive in our minds and help our vocal cords to hold up as we continue to seek to bring you glory through this conference. So Lord, would this afternoon be edifying and would it be glorifying to King Jesus? It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys are holding in there well. It's good that this is a battle song. I feel like we're a good regimen, getting the, the workout going. So I, I direct and teach in a business that I own in Moscow, Idaho, Idaho, Bone Music Academy. And what we do is a lot of what I'm doing here. Really passionate about giving people music literacy. And I know that the most important way in which you can learn that and grow in that is training the voice. Right? The voice is the most important instrument. And so in all of our training, like, you know, piano is our popular instrument, but when we do piano training, we're also doing voice training too, so that children, everybody who's a student is learning how to sing tunefully, right? Back to the handout. Everyone needs to be stage two, leaving Bonet Music Academy, stage four on their way. So they're, they learn to use their voice, but they also use the, learn to use their ears too. I probably said in session one, music's a language, and so we teach in a very language-based way, right? So we're going into piano. It's not, all right, let's open up to textbook page number one. This is a quarter note. Isn't that nice? Here's a half note, and et cetera. But we're learning music via music, and that makes the teaching so much more engaging and just along with the diversity of instruments. It's always voice plus. You know, it's not, let me just go learn the banjo, and hopefully this guy doesn't make me sing. But. So I directed, I've got a number of teachers who, um, you know, teach in piano, um, violin, cello, guitar, et cetera. So we teach in Moscow and online. So if something like that, private lesson uh, has interest to your children, reach out to us. It, we could be a good fit. And also we have options to meet different budgets and schedules. So we could, we have a piano video course, 96 bucks, one year, 80 videos, and you can learn to play the piano, read music, and just grow in music in that path, not bad. Everybody's got 100 bucks, right, for a, a one-year curriculum. And then hybrid option, you could then meet with a live teacher once a month, right? So I'm learning on the course, but then someone checks in and be like, oh my goodness, what have you been doing? You've not been following the videos. Let's try this again. Or like, oh, good job. Like, you're, you really got it. And then, you know, the premium is like the weekly private lessons that you could do online there. So I plugged it. Capability, intelligence, freedom, joy, gratitude, confidence. Bone Music Academy. Rise again, you lion-hearted. Turn there. <clears throat> six, six, five in your concerts packet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to sing verses one and four together. Here we go. Rise again, ye lion-hearted saints of early Christendom. Whither is your strength departed? Whither gone your martyrdom? Lo, love's light is on them, glory's flame upon them, and their will to die doth quell in the Lord and Prince of Hell. Verse 4. Would to God that I might even as the martyred saints of old, with the helping hand of heaven steadfast, stand in battle bold. O oh my God, I pray thee, in the combat stay me, grant that I may ever be loyal, staunch, and true to thee. Amen. Now, let's train in that. So, you know you have to stand, you have to move together as a body, but you also have to shout together as a body. My, my biggest interpretation of when it talks about shouting in the scriptures, how do we apply that to our now context in which we have the churches that look like they do, I think shouting together the Lord looks like the amen. Right, what does amen mean? Agree. Amen. <laughs> Agree, let it be so, etc. And so typically... Like, this is a hymn, but it's scripture-inspired. When we sing this, we're praying and praising the Lord, as Calvin liked to sum it up. And so, especially when you're doing a psalm, you're, we're praying to the Lord together. In fact, oftentimes, when it's just my family at home, we sing before our meals, we don't actually pray after that. Like, okay, now, Lord, thank you for it, even though it's really important. But I consider that 
a prayer to the Lord, and that's fine. You can see it in that way. And in fact, the reason I like to do it is because it's like, oh yeah, when I'm singing, I'm singing to the Lord. I'm singing to one another, and we're praying together. And so just some like, thing like that to, you know, trying to shape from the background I came down, that, that counts as prayer, right? You don't, we don't have to always put our hands together. And so you can do that too. Anyways, but when we say amen, that's a time to say it hardly. Everyone say, listen, amen, amen. And to do that in unity, ready again. Amen. So typically, oh, you guys weren't ready. Here we go. Amen. So there's a, a cadence in which that naturally flows after the song. Lord and Prince of Hell. Amen. See, kind of there's a flow to it. Uh, sing, Lord and Prince of Hell. Ready? <laughs> Lord and Prince of Hell. Amen. And you're watching me. That was fantastic. Did you guys see how fantastic that was? So, it was fantastic. Now, flip over in the bulletin as you are pondering the ways of unifying amen to this guy. Rise again, you lion-hearted, with the letters. Now, look over to the left of the page. What do you see with your eyes that look? Letters. Alphabet. You guys are, shoot, sharp now. Alphabet. I call it the letter ladder. I think I mentioned it earlier, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Reading it... Up and down is how we have to do it in music. We read left to what in, in English? Right. We're not Japanese. I think they read right to left in Japanese. Or maybe it's uh, Arabic. That's what I've got to say. That's why I stick to the language of music. But so just the concept of like, oh, yeah, what's before G under letter ladder is a really helpful tool to peek at when you're reading your music. Because you're like, OK, this note is two under. Math letters there. So now notice, uh, I've removed the, what did I, I removed something from this version. What is it? I removed the bass clef. I removed the basses, which means I, I destroyed the system. <laughs> Down with the system. So I destroyed the system and just left a what? Treble clef. On a staff. Good. I like all the, I like where we're going with the vocabulary, though. So yeah, I just have one, two, three, four staves here, just that top treble stave. Now notice, on the staff, there's a line that looks different than the others. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's, and it's red. What's that all about? Why did I isolate that line? That's your G. That's your G, G? Come on. Roll with it. <laughs> you got to roll with your Gs. So <laughs> I don't know what's happened. <laughs> all that to say. I find this to be, I was asking my wife, you know, she, she teaches percussion for us and is a teacher, and I was like, oh, I'm going to, like, put this, isn't that amazingly profound to have that G line? She's like, I think it's all right. I was like, all right, like, that's really helpful. But what it does is emphasize when you're reading music on the staff, you've got your G clef at the beginning, oh, yeah, that line is your anchor point in which you alphabet from. It's like, oh, shoot, that, that note is super high. Let me, G, O. Oh. A, B, C, good, or G backwards, good reminder there. Now take a survey and see, did I, did I label all the pitches correctly? Uh-oh, pop quiz. All right, everyone take their time. All right, look, okay, I say D, okay, now lose the letter ladder, <laughs> that's a G, so, right, it's line space, right, a space, you can put a note there, so you've got to, that counts too. No, the D is correct. Oh! That should be another D. Everyone see that? That, that, that second letter, that's a, false, that's a false gospel right there. That should be another D because it stays at the same spot, right? should be D, D. Okay. All right. That's wrong. Anything else that's wrong? You people who can read music, you guys slow down and be quiet. The rest of you, you take your time. You're, my, you're, you know, you're sweet in my eyes right now. Okay, everything looks good. That F looks good. It's on space. Right, so if I go D space, what? Bad D, Bad D where? Fourth. Fifth? Fifth? On early? Yeah. I, I think that checks out. But I like the enthusiasm. No? He says, <laughs> he's, just trying, he's like, I'm just trying to stir the pot here. No, it checks out. It's good. Now, you know, we, we can go on this pop quiz. Some people are like, well, probably. He's a music guy, right? <laughs> He's got a music business. 
this is a good time to ask a question on the basics of reading. I'm giving you all the tools to you know how to read music, identify, understand, and even then bring it to life on the keyboard. That's what I like to see. Now everyone stand with me. I want you guys to be a cake. Everyone go, woo! Ah. You know what you're going to do as you drive to church this week? Woo! Ah! Mama! Moo! <laughs> you know, like, so even if you're a guy, you guys have to do that too. The, the masculine quality of that, like, that's gay. <laughs> the, the masculine quality of it is that is singing handsomely is manly. Singing awfully is not manly, right? It's just loud. And so... Typically, our male voice, especially when we're going to church in the morning, they're a little rough. Woo, lighten that thing up. Because when you're singing, praise Father, praise, it's kind of high, right? So you have to do it lightly. I'm going, praise, praise. It can be light and easy there, too. So do that so you can lighten up your voice. Ladies, same thing here. You want to feel nice and flexible. You warm up before your sport things. You also warm up for your music things. I want to sing through Psalm 117. But I'm glad we did that little ooh. Go like this with me. Ah. ah. Everyone sing. Ooh. Now good. Start right on it. Don't scoop. Shoot the deer right in the chest. Ooh. Listen. Ah. Ah. Listen. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Now listen twice as loud as you're singing. Ready? Ooh, ah, ye. Those three vowels. Ready? Sing. Ooh, ah, ye. Ladies, could you hear the men? Men, can you hear the ladies? A little bit? Good. So now, have that same blending as we sing 117. I think that's the C that we're looking for. Can it? Praise. Ready? Group one. Ready? Here we go. Praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye peoples. Praise the Lord, all ye nations. His great order. And the praise the Lord, all ye nations. Great order. And the praise of the Lord, all praise ye the Lord. Truth of the Lord, little kindness is great toward us. And the praise ye the Lord. Turn it forever. Last time. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Amen. Oh, that was awful. Praise, praise. sing that last phrase. Here we go. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. That was a fantastic. Sit down. Now, one thing I always do after I get done singing, whether solo, congregational, I think, what could I do next time that was 1% better than I did last time? Hopefully, each of you has something that you're taking away after that, because all, we all performed for one another and before the Lord. Raise your hand and tell me. You can shout it out. What's, uh, I want to make, when I do this again, I want to make sure I do think about this, do this. What? Like, shoot, the pop quiz. A bit louder. Yeah, sometimes you think, like, oh, I feel like I sang too quiet, sang too loud. Volume thing could be one thing you adjust. What else? Yeah. There's sometimes it goes too fast for me. I, I trip over the words as I try to yeah. figure out the words. Yeah, next time let me just and then you go home. Roaring lion, lion, roaring. You're kinda of, yeah, practicing the words. That's great. And so you always walk away with a task. Right? And then you're being more engaged, right? Always engage in worship. Always engage in warfare, right? I don't you know, when they go out to war, like I'm just they're all just shooting. No, you're focused, you're really and you're oh too high. Let me adjust the shot, right, you hunters? I don't know. I'm doing like a bow and a rifle at the same time. You like that? <laughs> Arm that. And so, <laughs> that's right, uh, that I'm holding. 
<laughs> to the side like that. And so you want to be that as singers, too. You want to be skillful, understanding, knowledge, etc. What can I do better next time? Turn to when the enemy comes in in your packet. Now look at the bottom, second to last line, second to last staff line. No, no systems, right? No two are not put together, just singles. Look at the second to last line. You see it says, for the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. Everyone see where that's at? Listen to me and sing back. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us for. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. Now, he didn't sing the pitch. That's right. Keeping you on your toes. You never know what you're going to see in battle, men. <laughs> Put that chorus together. For ready. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. Now, we're going to learn the song in a different way. Typically, I could just sing a little bit. You listen a little bit, sing a little bit back. That chorus is your part. We're going to do this almost like a shanty, where I'm going to call out the verses before. And you know what you sing? The chorus. That's your part. When the enemy comes in a roaring like a flood, coveting the kingdom and a hungering for blood, the Lord will raise a standard up and lead his people on. The Lord of hosts will go before, defeating every foe, defeating every foe. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. Now, this song, in that chorus, is that a lower part in your register? So that's closer to your speaking voice. For the Lord. You can push on the gas just a little bit. When we're singing, praise the truth of the Lord, and it's kind of higher. Got to be lighter. But when you're lower, you can lean in. Try that chorus again. Ready, sing. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. You know who can lead in this song? The man. Lower voices. And that time he dead. Other times, I don't know what you were doing, but it wasn't leading. Okay, so that time, always be ready up front. Now, follow along with the words, be absorbing the melody, because you're going to have to sing the verses too. Some may trust in chariots, and some trust in the horse, but we will depend upon the name of Christ our Lord. The Lord has made my hands to war, my fingers to the fight. The Lord lays low our enemies and raises us upright. He raises us upright. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. Thousands fall at my left hand, ten thousands to the right. But he will defend us from the arrow in the night. Protect us from the terrors of the teeth of the devourer. Imbue us with the Spirit, Lord, encompassing with power. Encompass us with power. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. Now, I can still use a little bit more volume. But not ugly singing, just more volume. One thing that will help give you more strength is to have a little bit more separation. You kind of hear me. I'm, a, I'm almost barking this. When the enemy comes in a roaring like a flood. When the end, there's space between my sounds. For the Lord. Ba, 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 ra, ba, ba, ba. Ah, trumpet playing. Come on now. I need more trumpeting from you. For the Lord is our defense. Here's peanut butter and jelly. For the Lord is our defense, here's some sea salt. Come on now, sing that chorus, ready, go. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. That's right. Now listen to me sing and sing back. When the enemy comes in a roaring like a flood, when, when the enemy comes in a roaring like a flood, coveting the kingdom and a hungering for blood, Coveting the kingdom and a hungering for blood. The Lord, oh, no, no. the Lord will raise the standard up and lead his people on. The, the Lord will raise the standard up and lead his people on. The Lord of hosts will go before, defeating every foe, defeating every foe. The Lord, the Lord of hosts will go before, defeating every foe, defeating every foe. 
oh, someone sang that wrong. I think it was me. <laughs> the Lord of hosts will go. Here we go. The ready go. The Lord of hosts will go before defeating every foe, defeating every foe. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. Let's put that. Yeah, did you guys hear what the gentleman did? Yes, who defend. Right, clean ending. Same thing, we're putting space in between our sounds. You can have a good clean ending there. Yes, who defend. Dead. Satan. Now, <clears throat> let's sing verse 1 all the way together. Now we've got a sense of it. When ready, sing. When the enemy comes in a roaring like a flood, coveting the kingdom and a hungering for blood, the Lord will raise a standard up and lead his people on. The Lord of hosts will go before, defeating every foe, defeating every foe. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. Amen. Good. Now, you guys have a good handle. Let's add verse 2 and 3. Some ready sing. Some may trust in chariots and some trust in the horse. But we will depend upon the name of Christ our Lord. The Lord has made my hands to war and my fingers to fight. The Lord lays down our enemies and raises us upright. He raises us upright. For the Lord is our defense. Yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense. Yes, who defend. Stand for verse 3. Thousands. Thousands fall at my left hand, ten thousands to the right. But he will defend us from the arrow in the night. Protect us from the terrors of the teeth of the devour. Imbue us with the spirit, Lord, encompass us with power. Encompass us with power. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend us. For the Lord is our defense, yes, who defend. Amen. Now let's practice that. That fend, we're going to hold out. Fend. Amen. Sing. Fend. Amen. And you guys see it. Have a sip. Turn to the next packet here. Next packet. Not the next packet. You only get one packet. Next page. Now things get a little dicey and sharpened a little bit. We know A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, incorrect. Incorrect. But now, sharps and flats. No, oh, wait a second. Go back to that last song. Whoop, whoop, whoop. When the enemy comes in. Now take a peek. You see that G clef on that top staff where our single melody soprano voice is placed? What's next to that thing? That's a sharp. That's a sharp. It's something. I don't know what it is. Okay, so we see it, right? We see the hashtag. We see the number sign. Now turn back over yonder. Over yonder. Now you'll notice, you see that tic-tac-toe up top? You sit on that, it's going to make you jump up, right? See that little guy? He's, he's sitting right there in his chair. Maybe see the little chair. Now, and look, he's jumping up. You know why? Because if you ever sat on something like that, right? If I just imagine it this big, and you know, the teacher is like, you sit, whoa, what happens? You jump up. So anytime we have, we have normal F, right? That's grandma's what door? That's front door. Now F sharp, it's like the top of the porch. Everyone turn to your paper piano. Paper piano, where is that? Paper piano. Ah, paper piano. Now everyone see grandma's house, like the, the black roof, rafters, pillars that hold grandma's house. You'll notice that in between F and G, you see that tiny black note, black key? I've labeled above it F sharp, right? Because we have F, but then we're jumping up to that black key because it's making you go up, F sharp. So when you're practicing this song, go back to, okay, where's the, for the Lord is our defense, yes, yes. then back in the packet, back to when the enemy comes in a roaring like a flood, Coveting the kingdom and a hunger in for blood, or thirsting for blood, however that works. You'll notice that that sharp is right there on the staff. It's right next to our G clef. So 
one of these pitches that we have will not be normal. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Are there any more letters in music? No way, Jose or Jose, ya, depending, male or female. So when you see that pitch right there, tell me, it's on that top line, right? Right in that top line, it's going through the heart of that sharp. Everyone see that visually? Looks like it's hanging up there like a nice little Christmas ornament, hanging on our little staff tree. Anytime you see an F, right? There's that top line's an F if you go back. Oh, let me go back to my here. Anytime you see an F, you can't play normal F. You have to play F what? Sharp. Sharp. Right, so anytime you're practicing your music, you're like, oh, I'm gonna go like find out what letter that is, and then I'm gonna whoop, paper piano to real piano, play it on there. You have to keep track of like, oh, wait a second, F sharp. Don't play a normal F. When the enemy comes, wait, when the enemy comes in. If I didn't play that, if I didn't sing an F sharp, when the enemy comes in, kind of sounds nice. When the enemy comes in, comes in, comes in. If I had my normal F, it doesn't get the same sound, so if you're practicing, it's going to sound weird. Sharp, you can see it at the beginning, and it means that the pitch that it goes with, you got to jump it up, raise it up. Give me your questions. Sir. <gasps> what? What are you talking about? Just those two notes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sharps kind of work like, everyone look at the last line. You see where it says our defense, last staff line in our defense? Look what's by that, that note down there. What is it? It's a sharp right here. We've got a sharp right there. So we know that, that that's not going to be a, a normal note, right? It's not going to be a normal letter. It, and, it, and it's a C sharp. And yes, the, and the question is, so that means we play C sharp for both of those Cs. That's right. We've altered it. It's not normal anymore. He's caught the sharp disease. It's going right to his lungs and his bum. Good. Other questions? There are sharps among us. Beware. They're pokey. Now, back to this sheet. Sharps can really be among us. If you look at this first little example right here, that looks exactly like what we see in our song, right? We just have one sharp. One of those letters is not going to be normal. It's just F sharp. But then guess what? We have some songs where there's how many sharps? I hope not. I hope not. Two. No, well, two, well, the next one over, too. <laughs> so you notice, not only is F sharp sharp, but I give you a little cheat sheet. What else is sharp? C sharp. So I'm like helping you out. So you come to a song, you're working on it, trying to get better. You look at the beginning, you're like, whoa, hey, those look sharp. Ouch, don't want to touch it. And there's two of them. So the two pitches that are not going to be normal are what's two? F sharp and C sharp. And then you see how it just keeps going on. We can add, we can have three sharps. Three pitches that are normal, like everyone's getting on the doghouse roof and grandma's house roof, we're getting on the black keys, and et cetera. Questions on how it can multiply. What's nice about when it multiplies, you keep what you already have. It's not like, oh, if I have two sharps, let's just pick a new one. Like, how about C sharp and B sharp? If you have one sharp, it's F sharp. If you have two sharp, one of them is going to be F sharp. If you have seven sharps, one of them is going to be F sharp, as you can see by the, the low down get up. Most intense part of the entire, entire day. Okay, now take a peek to the left of my sharp. Any questions? Time to ask. You sharp questions? Sharp cheddar questions? Look what's next to the sharp up top. Flatty. Flatty. You're going along on your bicycle, children, having a good time. You're doing one of those like water bicycles so that you can move like this. <laughs> and you hit something in your tire, what happens? It pops. And are you as high on your bike anymore? No. 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 Your tire goes flat, and so the, the bike goes low. Or if you get a blowout, you ever been driving down the road, you get a blowout, boom, you really go low, and you go flat. So anytime you see that little B, it means we're going flat. OK, just a quick note on that. Tur turn to the next song. Who would true valor see? Wait a second. I mean, yeah, keep turning there. 
But then look, as you turn there, what do you see next to the G? See flats? Three. Bless. I don't know what that's all about. You don't have to know what it's all about. You just have to know we're making some changes. <laughs> Who would true valor see? Let him come hither. Who? Who would true valor see? Let him come hither. One here will constant be, come wind, come weather, one. One here will constant be, come wind, come weather. There's no discouragement shall make him once relent. There's ready sing, here we go. There's no discouragement shall make him once relent. His first avowed intent to be a pilgrim is his first avowed intent to be a pilgrim. Very nice. Now you'll notice at the bottom left of that third system there, uh oh, music text. Who wrote the text? He's a Pilgrim Progress guy. Now, as you listen to me sing this song, what, what kind of quality of music is it? What do you think? A traditional English melody. What would you say? It sounds like Bach. Yeah, it's dancey, right? It's kind of skippy. Right, can't you see? Who would true valor see? Like, it's like joyously shining over your enemies. <clears throat> and as we see in this text, I mean, he's just like, yeah, come whatever this, ha, right? We're la you know, it's like in Proverbs as a talk, we laugh at the time. She laughs at the time to come, the Proverbs 31. It's like a laughing song. And, and, it's, and it's great because it's, it's jolly warriors. When we sing uh, Rise Again, Joyously, they take their stand on the arena's bloody stand. Right? Isn't that the goal? You think about the ultimate sacrifice, giving your life for Christ. What do you want to look like when you do that? You know, you want to be brave and strong. And so this, that music emphasizes it, and this music emphasizes it too. Listen to my longer phrases <clears throat> and sing back. Who would true valor see? Let him come hither. One here will constant be, come wind, come weather, who? Who would true valor see, let him come hither. One here will constant be, come wind, come weather. There's no discouragement shall make him once relent. His first avowed intent to be a pilgrim. There's, there's no discouragement shall make him once relent. His first avowed intent to be a pilgrim. Nice. Now let's sing all of that verse together and really get a handle on this jolly song. Who ready sing? Who would true valor see? Let him come hither. One here will constant be. Come wind, come weather. There's no discouragement shall make him once relent. His first of our intent to be a pilgrim. Excellent singing. Now you'll note every song has a challenge. One of the challenges of this song is knowing when to move and knowing when to hold. Who, you kind of have to, who would true valor, and then you've got to move there, or especially at the end, there's no discouragement, you kind of have to hold that out, because you're like, I'm not discouraged, look at me, I'm not dis I'm singing high, but I'm not discouraged, there's no discouragement shall make him, and, and then you like pull back the bow, and then you let it fly with quicker sounds there. So whether you know all the ins and outs of that, you know that that's the same different thing. 
right? Oh, I need to be better at matching the moving a little bit better because I'm different than it. Now, let's sing verse 2 and 3. Stand with me. Whoso beset. And then look at verse 3. Hobgoblins. Prepare yourself. Hobgoblins. Who ready sing? Whoso beset him round with dismal stories. Do but themselves confound his strength the more is. No lion can him fright, he'll with a giant fight. He will make good his right to be a pilgrim. Of goblin nor foul fiend can daunt his spirit. He knows he at the end shall life inherit. Then fancies fly away, he'll fear not what men say. He'll labor night and day to be a pilgrim. Amen. Have a sit. Then fancies fly away. Now what you're going to have to feel there is kind of a two beat. Then fancies fly away, he'll fear not what men say. Sing that for me. Then ready. Then fancies fly away, he'll fear not what men say. And that, that verse really kind of draws out the best of the text right there. Fancies flying away. See ya. And they're gliding in the wind. And fancies fly away, he'll fear not what men say. Then I'm trying to, as I'm learning, getting some handles on this music, then I'm trying to put that application into progress. Now, take a peek back at the beginning where you once said, how many flats do you see in this song at the beginning? Three. See, one, two, three. One, two, three. Not too bad. Flip back over to your sheet. <clears throat> so if you're now, how do you use this? See down low where you've got one flat, two flat, three flat, four flats, blue fish, brown fish, yellow fish, a dollar. There, you have to go and find the, the lines that have got the four flats. Where's that at? It's kind of towards the end, right? So that means you can use this like, oh, if I'm like trying to play this on the piano or just understand the way my notes are moving a little bit, I need to know that what four ABCDs are going to be different. B, E, A, and D, just like that. Just four there. Right, and then notice back to the compounding effect. Like sharps and flats are like compounding interest for all of you people investing in and whatnot. It's like what you put in at the start is going to be there plus some more. And so in the flats, the first flat, if you've got one, it's going to be what? B. And then if you have two, it's going to be B flat and. And if you have three, it's going to be B flat, E flat, and. And it just continues on that cycle. OK, final questions on sharps, flats. Now turn back over here. You're in the last stage of the field. <clears throat> what pitch do we start on in this song? Uh-oh, you don't have your sweet red G line. That was super helpful. What's the letter name? Ta everyone take a moment. Don't shout it out. Take a moment to read, right? That second line is G. Down one, down one. So you have to go two down from G. E flat. Why not just normal E? Because you're like, oh yeah, back here, the E flat. What about the second pitch? Take a moment to read it. Who ooh. That note's on a space. F, A, B, C, D, E, letter, ladder, one above that. Okay? And then the next two notes we need to read too. Look at wood and true. Wood and true. Don't shout it out. Take a moment to look. Wood, true. If you've got G and E flat, you are correct. Yay, and here's your $1,000. You sure do. See your dad after. I gave it to him already, right? <laughs> 
Talk to me, yeah, that's right. All right, final questions on reading music, performing music, taking it to the next level, et cetera. <laughs> I love Junction City, it's so, so inspiring. Um, what I want to end with then is some encouragement, a little bit like what Cage is, like where do you go next from here? So as you have kids and a schedule yourself and you're always making priorities and you're always making decisions about what you're going to invest with and the two biggest resources are what? Time and money, time and money. The nice thing about music is you can enter it with a low amount of both, but you know what you have to do with it? Treat it like a compounding investment. If you start now, you know, it's very likely, it's very likely that all of us in here can live for another 15, 20 years, right? Could you imagine starting now doing music, like daily, weekly thing that's a part of, of your rhythm is practicing and getting 1% better at music. After 100 days, you'll be 100% better at music, right? But then in 15 years, shoot, if any of this was like, whoa, this is gonna be like baby stuff, like give me something, tell me about a diminished triad or something, you know? In 15 years, that can be you. And so I want you to think about music investment or music in that way, something that you have investment a little bit over a long time goes a long way. Now, the best way to do it is do it in family worship. When you sit down, like make this a part of the catechism. Take this pack at home. All right, we're singing, uh, we're singing doxology. We're singing this hymn. We're singing this psalm. By the way, we need a list of those. Those psalms that you're like, you need a psalm for this? Anytime I was like, shoot. I feel like as a music guy and a song guy, I should have, I should have just know all of those songs. You should know, you should hear a song, right? You should hear a song, hear a song for that situation of life. Anyways, but when you do family worship, which you do, in that time, which, and you have music, which you will, right, because you're a Christian, have a little catechism. Hey, kids, how many systems are in this song? Hey, kids, how many, how many staves do we see? Uh, is there an alto part? Show me the second note of the alto part. And it's probably good for you, some of you. And then for children, they're, they're going to walk into their music classes or their music lessons and just, it's not they just go home and then the parents don't really check in or help out, but they're investing in that way. Or it's like, oh, kids, is that, do we have sharps over there by the clef? No, those are flats, Dad. Right? Oh, how many flats do we have? They can count. And, and there's, more, there's more ways that you can be, um, like, no more, like, always keep going more. But just at that basic level, I see the sharps. I see the flats. I'm turned to this weird tire <laughs> man on a, on a couch page. And like, oh, that means E flat, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. Da, 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 da. Okay, neat. Now, now I'm go play an E flat, and now make sure you don't miss any of your flats or your sharps. But just that little bit of what, whatever I've given you here, if you can ingrain that, like not lose any of it, not you know, forget more than you learned, then that is gonna set a foundation for you to step into your next musical experience and next musical education opportunity and be ready to go to the next level. Same thing on, on the singing wise of things too. So I would get the schedule, the planner out, got 24 hours in a day. Lord willing, I'm sleeping for eight. Leaves me 16 hours to work with, I think. So now, what are you doing for 16 hours when you're awake? Can five to 15 minutes of those be devoted to just getting 1% better at singing? You've got sing your part. You've got recordings that you can match. You've got things that you can use your retinas for so that then, next time I see you, you look more like this, right? <laughs> That's right. Like, oh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a woman, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that, that's my, my preaching. Final thoughts, questions, before I turn you to the, the battle to go kill Satan and stuff. So seriously, if you didn't catch, like a hundred bucks gets access to how many lessons are on that, on 80 lessons.
Um, that's a pretty smoking deal. So if you want to grow in these things even beyond what you learn now, but maybe weekly lessons seems like too much, uh, that's a great option. That's something you could go through as a family too, watch them together, learn together. So uh, that's a great option. Um, you guys should definitely take that up. We're going to go ahead and take, let's say, a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 2 o'clock um, on the dot. There's plenty of coffee made. And you might need it, you know. The final one's a sermon. This has been interactive. Then it'll be sitting. Lunch is settled in, you know. Some caffeine might be good. And so uh, get some coffee. We'll be back at 2 o'clock for the final session of this morning.